OK, Emmy fans, we are days away from the nominations and the race is heating up. And here to talk about it is Pete Hammond of Deadline Hollywood. I'm Tom O'Neill of Gold Derby. And we are both, by the way, Emmy voters. But Pete can pull rank on me because he's a past governor, right? Pete? Yes, I was uh, for six years on the board of governors of the Television Academy. So anything you don't like about what the Academy does, you can blame me because uh, <laughs> I voted in a lot of that stuff. Uh, and I'm happy about our new theater and all that stuff, which I was on the board when we approved that. So the Academy is looking good physically. At the, we'll find out what they look like when these nominations come out, but. Uh, uh, it's, it's in good shape right now. I like the voting. This was the first time I've ever voted. I think the, uh, the electronic system is very friendly. Yes, very friendly. Unlike the Motion Picture Academy, when they launched uh, their online voting, it was a disaster, you know. And, and this is done by the same company. The Academy hired the same company, but we waited, the Academy waited a couple of years before they went into it to let the um, kinks get out of the system. <laughs> With the Oscars. With Oscar, let them go yeah, and yeah. let Emmy just <laughs> sail in. The other thing the uh, Television Academy did that the Motion Picture Academy still is not doing is they got rid of paper ballots on the first chance they could. So last year, uh, when voting was uh, occurring in both the uh, finals and the nomination phase, uh, there were no paper ballots to be had. You had to find a way to vote electronically. It was like throwing you into the deep end. Those poor older voters didn't know. <laughs> it didn't matter. The Motion Picture Academy is still afraid. They still offer paper ballots uh, to people. And the SAG waited seven years before they got rid of paper ballots. So uh, the TV Academy uh, digitally, I think, is way ahead of the curve. And it's worked beautifully. I mean, a moron could vote in the <laughs> Emmys. And quite a few morons uh, do. Quite a few. 19,000 <laughs> members of the Academy, as yes. you mentioned, including me and Pete. Uh, yes. But let's explain how the system works. So for drama and comedy series in most of the program categories, which is what I voted in, you get 10 choices. So you just yeah. check off 10 boxes. Mm -hmm. You have this long stream of, of candidates. Yeah. Remember, the Emmys are the only race where you actually paid to enter. The Oscars yeah. are free, the Grammys are free, the rest of it. So um, it, it helps limit it, but still there are anywhere from 70 on up in each program yeah. category. You just check off 10 boxes and the list can be presented in one of two ways, either alphabetically from A to Z or yeah. reversed Reverse, Z. Yes, yeah. exactly. Which I've noticed uh, went on. I'm also in the writer's branch. Uh, that's who I repped when I was in the governor's branch. And the writers did the same thing too. So, you know, for the writing in a movie or miniseries, it starts with all the way and it goes down and then another one starts with a W and goes the other way and I go well that's a that's a good way to do it and it's very it's very friendly voter friendly you just scroll down and you can make changes as you want and then and then the thing comes up and it says here's review your list Do you want to make changes and it'll take you right back it's so it's so easy and I don't think it favors alphabetizing things, particularly in the actors branch, we had a real problem, you know, because uh, there was one year when the nominees for supporting actress all started with a B, you know, <laughs> Ellen Burstyn, Carol Burnett, I remember this, you know, and that was the year that Ellen Burstyn was nominated for a 25 second role, <laughs> yes, yes. and we had to change it to five minutes on, on air, you know, or you're not eligible to uh, even enter. But, you know, that was the embarrassment and the laziness, I think, of voters. And I hope they've gotten over that. But it is so daunting. I find the Emmy process and the Gold Derby process, too, <laughs> you know, with these long list of shows. And, you know, and to Gold Derby's credit, I mean, you have every conceivable possible thing. So I did them back to back, my predictions on Gold Derby and then my actual votes. And actually, I think I was finally voting in my actual votes to make my predictions look good on Gold Derby. <laughs> So I was voting for shows I hadn't even seen, but that I predicted would be in oh, here. That's so, funny. That's funny. I'm sorry, Academy, am I supposed to say that? But um, anyway, I'm hoping it works out and that I look like a genius on uh, Gold Derby, and who's ever going to remember what I voted for in the Emmys anyway? <laughs> let's, let's talk about the one thing that I, uh, I do have a quibble with, and that is, and it, 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 it uh, launched under your watch, I believe, and that was... Uh, because you were on two years ago, was it? And the decision yeah. was made to popularize the vote. Yeah. The decision was made to go beyond these very small judging panels, yeah. which had many drawbacks, of course. Mm -hmm. But on, in the old days, you would see a show like Breaking Bad in its first year when nobody knew it was on the air. Right. You would see it enter the race, and Brian Cranston got nominated. The show yeah. did not for series. And, won. and he won. Yeah. I don't think that can happen under the new system where you now have basically a popular vote mm -hmm. of, every, of all 2,000 members of the acting branch. Uh, and... 
so we're not going to see the old upsets we used to see where Kira Sedgwick would win for the, the closer and we would see, um, uh, you know, all that. Happened. No, they popularized it. And the Motion Picture Academy has followed suit, too. They popularized the foreign language categories yeah, yeah. and the documentary categories that all used to be in the finals voted by committees still or, or people that could prove they've seen stuff. Uh, the Motion Picture Academy always had everybody eligible to vote for all the major um, uh, commercial categories, uh, always. The Television Academy never had that in the finals. Television Academy originally, when I first joined, was blue ribbon panels. You'd go and sit in a hotel room and watch with these other voters who volunteered over a weekend to sit and watch these shows so you knew you were watching them. And I actually, they had uh, some people, I sat in some rooms where they said, okay, can we turn this off now? And I'm going like, you can't turn it off. <laughs> people would get in arguments and things and our people would fall asleep in their chairs. Anyway, they changed that a few years later uh, so that in the honor system, they would send you DVDs and you would watch, home. but it would still be a limited pool of voter volunteers who could prove they didn't vote in the last two years and they weren't involved with the shows. Now they've opened it up as of last year in the finals to all the members as long as they voted in the first round, they can vote in the second by round. By peer group, so it's still restricted by peer group except for the program the programs. Pro everybody Th that's votes on good. programs. But in the old days, it would be as few as 50 to 70 people who would decide the race for best drama actor yes. or, or that kind of thing. And, and it, it had many, many great things happen too. It was considered the purest system of picking winners right, because right, right. we knew everybody was seeing everything. And that was a system that also gave us wins by best drama series for picket fences, things that yeah. would never happened today right. and it, it uh, remember the legacy of the Emmy Award is that many great shows from All in the Family, Cagney and Lacey, Hill, and the Hill Street Blues was low rated its first year Cheers. Yeah. These shows broke through winning at the Emmys because they were juried yes. and then that gave the networks confidence to keep them on the air and they became classics. Yes. In recent years we've seen that with Amazing Race, CBS would have canceled it after its first year if it hadn't won the Emmy. Juliana Margulies is somebody who became a star when she won in that uh, first year where she was just like a guest uh, appearance. Then she won, that put her on the map. She went on, of course, to be a star of that show and to win in the upper categories once the good wife came. I'm not sure this is possible under the new system, so I'm very watchful to see that it, you know, we don't go back to the old popular... Well, this does favor, but it was interesting to see the first year in the finals, you know, have a whole new set of winners in the major categories of drama series yeah. and comedy series. HBO won everything. HBO won, but they won for shows that had been around and okay. nominated. Game of Thrones had been nominated every year it had been on. Veep had been nominated and won for Julia. Louis Dreyfus, but not for series until it opened up to the Academy, and that gave us a new set of winners. Now, what I think is going to happen, and I am making uh, my predictions here very conservatively, based on the Emmys tend to repeat themselves over and over. We've had the first year of popular vote. I think it's going to look similar next year, even though with these hot, little, hip, little critic favorite shows, Mr. Robot, all that stuff that have won other awards, Mozart in the Jungle, whatever the Golden Globes, and we know the Golden Globes like to anoint new shows and look good and all that stuff. The uh, Voting Academy members in the Television Academy very much like the Motion Picture Academy, uh, kind of, uh, you know, stuck in their ways sometimes and vote, you know, conservatively, uh, not with whatever happens to be the flavor of the month. And I think you're going to see a lot of repeats. So I think Veep and Game of Thrones are likely, could likely repeat. Who they, knows? They will repeat. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and they will also win Best Movie this year. And they're going to win... Um, uh, you know, a lot of these acting categories again. The and, and, you know, the talk show category will be interesting, too, to see because HBO has John Oliver, who is now in a position, now that The Daily Show probably won't be nominated right. with Trevor Noah, and Colbert Report is off, and Colbert's on his first year, and the other thing. It'll be interesting to see uh, if Oliver, who is sort of the new kid on the block, but getting a lot of attention with a, with a weekly show, comes through for HBO with a win there at the Emmys, Oddly, over Bill Maher, who's, who's never won, who's that never show. won yeah, as a, on a show that he's hosted. I know, so. I know, I know. But if HBO wins too much, HBO won everything last year. It also won limited yeah. series. If well, it, let me just bring this up then. Why do we think that the Emmys are up against NBC Sunday Night Football? If that wasn't bad enough competition on September 18th, now CBS has decided to throw the first hour, two hours of the John Benet Ramsey miniseries <laughs> against the show too. This is like kind of not what the, they used to do. They used to like pull back, let the network that had the Emmys have that night a launching pad for the whole season and all of that stuff 
Uh, not so much. They're playing hardball against the Emmys, and I think that's the networks making a statement like HBO, you may win this stuff, but we're not giving you the platform easily to impress everybody here. Right, because let's point out that broadcast shows have done so poorly at the Emmys. They've done well on the comedy side with Modern Family winning, but only one broadcast show has been nominated in recent years at, on the drama side, and that was uh, The Good Wife. Yeah. Otherwise, it's uh, for the last two years, I believe it's been all cable shows for best drama series. And so this is their retaliation. And, and look, and when you here. had the entire Academy voting, they definitely continued favoring cable and HBO and to the point where that was the first loss Modern Family ABC show had in its entire run was last year at the hands of HBO's Veep finally you know and so that indicates to me like the networks are not going to get a friendlier uh, uh, look here I mean it's going to only get worse for them but right. I think Veep would have won anyway last year and I think HBO would have won anyway I think that um, we haven't seen enough of the new voting to pass judgment but if if all of the popular favorites prevail again and we don't see any of these upsets these delightful upsets we sometimes not so delightful <laughs> that way that uh, uh, this time then we have a problem with the Emmy voting yeah and you know and what you're seeing now is the Emmys I wrote a column for deadline are the Emmys becoming bigger than the Oscars now the Emmys will never be bigger than the Oscars prestige wise right that will never happen there's just too many categories There's 113 categories there's just too much proliferation which when I was on the board I was always the vote always with a, a number of other people saying, no, don't bring any more new categories in. Cut them. Cut them. This is cutting the prestige of the Emmys, in my opinion, when you keep handing them out. Now they're giving them out to short stuff. And all these things, and I looked on the ballot, I don't even know what half these shows are. <laughs> I don't I even know. know what the long shows are, much less the short shows. You know, it's just five, 400 things. You get piles and piles. I got 20 pounds of Netflix material. There, there were 50 uh, shipments of DVD uh, packages to Emmy voters this year. 50. That's the most yeah. ever. Oh, they're piled up all over my house, Tom. It's <laughs> everywhere. Half of them unopened. I can't begin to watch all of these shows. Who can't? I have, and I'm actually here a person that has seen a lot of stuff, but I can't imagine the average voter piling through this stuff and right, seeing right, it, right. which means my philosophy of how it's going to turn out goes in a conservative way of the way it's gone before. It's easier to vote for the familiar than it is for the unfamiliar. Right, but there is one uh, t tick, interesting tick in the voting, which I'm encouraged by, which could change everything. The reason they're doing this, of course, is they didn't want to pay to send DVDs out anymore. It was moolah. Right. It, money is the, is the basis for every decision in the world, of course. The Academy could get rid of shipping all those DVDs to voters. Why not? Yeah. So what they did is they kept the actual M episode submission process. Right. So now if you're an actor or you're in the writing branch, there was a little a chance for you to view you could, while you're hitting your ballot, right? You could yeah. watch the episode. But uh, there's no mandatory process to, to, to force you to do that or, or to police the, you to do it. Right. I think they should do that in the future. I think they should say, all right, you, look, you can't vote in here unless you actually watch these things. It's not easy to watch on, online still, right. and the, the Academy gives you this device to kind of watch things. No, they give you, they give you the device, but, you know, that is t the whole idea of that device, which is a Google um, Plus thing, uh, that you connect to your TV so you can watch it as it's meant to be seen on television right, right, right. on a relatively big screen. How many people do that? Did you do it this year? I did it. They sent it to, it was uh, last year uh, or the year before, whenever they sent out that device. And I've, I'm just technically challenged. And so I had my TV guy come over and- Three times, right? Yes. And I, <laughs> I remember wound this. up selling me like new, you know, <laughs> DVD machines that could play Blu-ray, you know, the whole thing. Anyway, um, it was very difficult for me um, to make it work and to stream. And I know the Academy kept calling me and going like, because I kept writing about it, like, this is horrible. <laughs> and the old people are not going to know how to do this. <laughs> you know what? The philosophy of the TV Academy under Maury McIntyre, who's the, um, who I call him the grand poobah of all the technical changes they've done, I think ultimately was correct. I said, just plow through it. You know, people like me will get on board eventually, find a way to do it. And I finally did find a way. It was not with their device. And the Google people were not happy with me when I just said, <laughs> all you need is a plug to plug in. You know, my, my IT guy showed me that. And now I get all that stuff on the big screen because I don't want people, even with television, to be watching it on your keychain right. or watching it on, you know, your mobile. iPhone. Um, watch it the way it's meant to be on a television. Of course, this is 10 times more important with the Oscars, which are motion pictures made for a big screen. Sure. Uh, but even with television, it is much better that we, we vote on these things, that we do see the shows. But I gotta tell you, nobody, I would like to meet one voter out there who's seen 
everything that's been sent to them. It would be impossible. And a lot of it are the net, is the network's fault because this year they sent everything so late. There were only three or four networks that sent anything to voters before May 1st. You can't send everything in those last four weeks. Remember, no. eligibility cutoff is May 31st. You can't send everything in a deluge right at the home stretch and expect everybody to see it. And of it. course, some people are waiting till the very end. And now we've had voting bins going on for a few days and I'm still getting stuff. I got Billy on the street or whatever his yeah, name yeah, is, yeah, yeah. you know, which is great. You know, and I got that, but I think they wanted to be last. And I think there's a feeling, you know, a philosophy in the Motion Picture Academy race, you know, that if you're last, you're going to be on the top of the pile. That was Harvey Weinstein's uh, <laughs> thing all the time. He wanted to be the last during Christmas, and it worked for him a few yeah. times. But doesn't it's not, matter no, no, with no, television. No. If you get, I'm telling you, people, consultants, whoever make these decisions, if you're last in this Emmy race, you're last. Because <laughs> yes. by the time we get these things at this point in the run, we go like, my attitude is not another one, you know, not another tape. It's just way too much at this point. But, and the advertising's out of control. It's billboards everywhere. It's all this stuff, all these new stunts and, and different ways of doing it. You get valet parking tickets, all this, all, you know, things that Netflix. Amazon sent Ubers to people's yes, houses, right? They so sent they Ubers, and, and then once the Uber picks you up to take you to your destination, they hand you a Kindle to watch. <laughs> Their programming, right. clever, right, 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 and uh, and yeah, they did all kinds of things. Uh, the streamers obviously have the money, Netflix and Amazon and Hulu, and they're spending it, and they're spending it in a big way. And uh, but they're also, I talked to Ted Sarandos who runs Netflix, and and I said, oh my God, I got all these pounds of twenty two pounds of, and he uh, said, you know, yeah, and, uh, you know, but and we give them the free subscription through June and all that stuff. He says, but we got to compete. If somebody else is sending it out, we have to send it out too. And we just have so much stuff and I, I'm going to send it all out. And so they, they deluge you in many, many different ways, whether offering you streaming service uh, free or this, that, or the other thing, or giving you old fashioned DVDs. Uh, but it is, it is pretty much out of control. But that's where I wrote about our Emmys becoming bigger than the Oscars. In one way, yes, I think money wise. I think the campaigns are bigger yeah. and they're broader, and you cannot drive down a street in Los right, Angeles right, right. without seeing this. Stuff. Hollywood spends more money, FYC money, for your consideration money on Emmys now than they do Oscars. Yeah. It has surpassed it, and I don't know how much. We haven't uh, tallied it all, but I think it's at least by 30% as of now. Yeah, and I think that's because there's simply more programming, there's yes, more yes, opportunities, yes. Uh, there's more networks now, there's more new things coming in, everybody's got an ego, they all have to say answer to those actors or whoever's appearing in those shows, wherever those shows are sure, appearing, sure. hey, why does that guy get it and I don't get it? And so everybody's got to come up with an Emmy campaign now. And I mean, my gosh, the other night I moderated one on the Paramount lot, uh, an FYC event for Grease Live, and Paramount put together an entire carnival just right. for 400 voters <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, who came to the event with 12 people on stage and, and they'd all just won Tonys for Hamilton, some of them and everything. They're out here and they, now they want Emmys. And it was, it was fun. It was big, but it was so expensive. And, and this is what they'll do. You know, this is just one show in one category that's trying to make a dent here. And they're trying to uh, make a dent in terms of bragging rights across the industry. And also, it does help these shows when they go into syndication internationally. It has a lot of, of value down the line. It doesn't translate like the Oscars do, where you win an Oscar, then it has a box office payoff. The biggest example of that, of course, was King's Speech. It went on to make $400 million internationally. But it does, it does count in other ways. But, but it don't is we have too many Emmys? This year, for the first time, we have three major primetime Emmy shows. Right. That means there's three governor's balls attached to them. They're going to start this the weekend before the um, They broke the creative primetime. arts into two nights now, yes. And that came up several times when I was on the board, you know, which is essentially run by below-the-line governors. Of course, yeah. And, um, and you know, the above the line, which is writers, directors, actors, are, you know, are always outnumbered by that. But they're right. You know, they have these shows. It's unlike the Oscars, which refuse to take those categories off the telecast. That's, that's a different thing. But here you had the primetime um, uh, Creative Arts Emmy show, and it was four hours, four and a half hours. It went on forever. Uh, and then they'd have the Governor's Ball for that. So now they've split it to Saturday and Sunday uh, of the previous week uh, with the exact same Governor's Ball. I, I mean, know, the whole I thing, know. this is a whole business they're taking over downtown. 
Uh, the convention center, yeah. And it's expensive as hell for the academy, but they wanted to find a way not to make it like it was a, a breathless race to get your Emmy and get off to make it that long an evening. They want to make it nice for the people that did these achievements, which I think is a good thing. So if you have to split it in half, as long as I don't have to go to all three, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm that's a good. I'll too. actually be at the Toronto Film Festival for the Creative Arts Emmys this year, so I'll be, you know, starting the movie season there. But I will be at the uh, the other Emmy show the next week. Okay, thanks, Pete.